<laughs> so what are you guys? We are the Sparkwood family. Let's talk a little bit about the gradient. So with the gradient, So when we talk about the gradient of f, what we're really talking about, and let's say at a point, say, a, b, okay? What we're really saying is, we're looking at this vector that we're creating, right? Where the first component is the partial of the function with respect to x, and the second component is the partial of the function with respect to y, evaluated at the point a, b, okay? So you can write it many ways. You can write it like this. You can write like this, you know, anything is good. So one thing for sure is this, uh, whenever we evaluate the gradient, we've got to plug in a number, right? So if you want a concrete number for the gradient, you've got to evaluate it at some given point. Okay. So just as a quick, quick example, let's say our function looked like this. And we're going to see this guy plenty of times when we look at the final exam review. But if we look, want the gradient here, the gradient of f is going to be the partial of this guy with respect to x, right? Which is going to be 2x. And the partial of this guy with respect to y, okay? So, I mean, the whole thing. So this would be 2y. Okay, um, and I think that's it. But now, we, to evaluate at a point, let's pick the point, say, 1, 1. Okay, I'd literally have to go into here and plug in 1 and 1. Okay, so in this case, the gradient at 1, 1 is 2, 2. Okay? All right. No big deal. You can naturally extend this to, say, three inputs, like x, y, z. So, you know, basically the same thing. Partial respect to the first guy, partial with respect to the second guy, and partial with respect to the third guy. Okay? But um, now, let's talk about some properties of the gradient. So, number one, let's say you have two functions, f and g, and you want the gradient of their sum. It's exactly what you expect. It's the gradient of the first guy plus the gradient of the second. And I'm going to take it for granted that we believe these rules. Okay? So, the other one is, if you want, say, cf, where, and I want to make special note of this, c is a constant. So it's a fixed given number, okay? So if c is a fixed given number, then we're going to have the gradient of c of f is c times the gradient of f. And for those of you that like linear algebra, uh, this thing is showing you that the gradient guy is basically a linear operator, right? Because it works on sums and it works on uh, multiplication by scalars, okay? But let's look at number three. So, so then let's actually take two functions, f and g. Okay, so if you want the gradient of f times g, you're going to get the product rule all over again. So it's basically um, the first times the gradient of the second plus the second times the gradient of the first. Okay, and here we'll, you know, think of it like this. Okay, and then number four, uh, there's basically like a chain rule for gradients. And that kind of works like this. So let's say we're taking the gradient of some function. Okay, uh, big F, uh, and we're plugging inside F of x, y, z. Okay, where here you can think of um, big F as being a function of t, and you can think of little f as being a function of x, y, z, giving you some guy t. Okay, so for you to do that, what does this guy look like? Well, it looks very much like the chain rule. You take the derivative of the outside guy, and you plug in f of x, y, z, okay? And you multiply it by the gradient of f of x, y, z. Um, I think most of these are pretty clear. I think this one might be a little bit confusing. So let's do a quickie problem with this so we get a feel for it, okay? And a generic example might be something like this. Let's say f of x, y, z is something like x squared plus y to the fifth plus z to the tenth, okay? And let's pick hmm, maybe big F to be something like big F of t is going to be t to the 200. Why not? Okay. So what's our composite function? Let's give this guy a name. So let's look at h of x, y, z, okay? Defined by x squared plus y to the fifth plus z to the tenth, all raised to the 200, or 200th power. Okay, all right, so what we want is we want the gradient of h. So if you want the gradient of h, okay, first we observe that the gradient of h is gonna be what? Well, it's the inside guy which is our function here, right? Plugged into this outside guy, which is something to the two on the power, and that's definitely gonna be our big function. Okay, so this is the format we're looking for, okay? Um, now it's gonna be a piece of cake, because you know, that following this pattern here, right? It's gonna be a derivative of the big guy, so we look at the big function here, which is gonna be this thing, but you know this is gonna be what? 200 t to the 199, right? So that's what we're gonna write. We're gonna write 200 t to the 199. Where for t we plug in f of x, y, z, but f of x, y, z is gonna be this guy. So we're just gonna plug this guy in. 
Is everybody about that? So what we did here was just this. This is our function f of x, y, z. And all we're doing is plugging in here in place of t. Okay? All right, no big deal. Okay, but we're not done, right? We've got to take that guy. That would be this part. So we just did this. And we need to multiply him by the gradient. Okay. All right, so let's run it. In fact, let's run it in green. So if you multiply this guy, so we're going to multiply him by the gradient. The so gradient. the gradient of this function, the function we're plugging in, and that's again going to be this guy. So if we do a separate computation here, the gradient of this guy is going to be, I'm going to do it in vertical column format. So the partial okay, so of this guy with respect to x, that would be 2x. The partial of this guy with respect to y, that would be 5y to the fourth. Uh, the partial of this guy with respect to z, that would be 10z to the ninth. Uh, do you guys buy that? Okay, so now we just put it in here. So what do we have here? We've got our vector, right? And it's being multiplied by this scalar. And I guess if you wanted to, you could slap it all together, but that kind of looks like a pain. So just to make this a little bit clearer, what that is, the final answer is going to be 200 times x squared plus y to the fifth plus z to the what? Tenth raised to the 199th power, right? As a scalar, times each component here. Okay. There we go. Okay, so not too bad, right? 